When you think about Ferrari, you imagine naturally aspirated V12s, V8s that rev out to 9000 RPM, and nowadays, some of the most ferocious turbocharging in the industry. Ferrari only deals with 12 and 8 cylinder engines these days. They haven't gone for smaller engines for decades. The last time Ferrari used a 4 cylinder was the 1950s, and they haven't gone for a road going V6 since the 70s. But if you were to head to Maranello and be lucky enough to visit the Ferrari Museum, you may come across this little engine, the Tipo F134. What makes this engine special is that it is a 1.3 litre 3 cylinder engine. What makes it really interesting is that it is supercharged. And then what makes it completely stand out against any other engine from any of the other top supercar makers is that it is a two stroke engine. Just like Cosworth are doing nowadays to create their V12s, Ferrari built this engine as a test mule from which to create a two-stroke V6 back in 1994. If this engine worked, the plan would be to put two inline threes onto one common crankshaft and you've got yourself a V6. So Ferrari will have developed this engine to prove the concept and what a cool concept it was to attempt. Why were they looking at two-stroke technology then? Well, you could say they were 30 years ahead of the times, because very recently F1 Chief Technical Officer Pat Simmons has said that he wants F1 to move to two-stroke technology in the near future, due to modern developments that have made these engines applicable to the goals of today. A two-stroke engine is simply an engine that takes two strokes of the piston or one full crankshaft rotation to complete its engine cycle. Unlike a four-stroke engine that has the suck, squeeze, bang and blow sections of its cycle and also a big complicated cylinder head with valves and camshafts in it, a two-stroke essentially combines the suck and blow and the squeeze and bang sections together, essentially cutting the steps of the engine cycle in half. In general, there are no inlet or outlet valves like you find in a four-stroke engine. Instead, the air-fuel mixture enters the cylinder via an inlet port in the cylinder wall and exits the cylinder via an exhaust port, all of which is controlled simply by the piston covering or uncovering these ports during the length of its stroke. Two strokes are few and far between these days, mostly because they're not the most efficient engines in the world. Also, they don't create much torque, their power bands are really narrow, and they also have very high combustion temperatures, which means they create a whole load of nasty NOx gases, which are not great for the environment. They're not all bad though. They are light, small, simple engines that have a high power to weight ratio, and that high combustion temperature can lead to high thermal efficiencies. What makes the Ferrari engine different is that it does have exhaust valves controlled by a camshaft. Also, it has twin port fuel injection, which is a massive move towards increasing the efficiency of a two-stroke instead of using the traditional method of a carburetor. Ferrari also took advantage of a couple of other methods to counteract the downfalls of a two-stroke. One of those was to supercharge the engine, which actually has a double purpose in a two-stroke. Not only is it there to pump more air into the cylinders to create more power, but it also helps to flush out the exhaust gases to make more room for the incoming air-fuel mixture, a process called scavenging that really increases the efficiency of combustion. Along with the supercharger, Ferrari fitted this engine with a standard sump-based lubrication system. Most two-stroke engines use the crankcase as part of the induction system, which means you need to lubricate the engine via the fuel. Using a petrol oil mix of around 50 to 1, the fuel circulates all the moving parts, keeping them lubricated. However, having that oil percentage means that you are straight up burning oil, which is why you get that nasty blue smoke out the back of a two-stroke bike. It's not good for emissions, and it's not good for your engine, because burning that oil leads to some nasty build-ups. Instead, Ferrari went for a traditional sump, keeping the oil out of the combustion chamber. That meant that they could connect the crankshaft, the supercharger and the oil pump in one nice belted package. Also, the other job of the supercharger was to make up for the lost compression from not using the crankcase as part of the two-stroke induction system. So why did Ferrari not pursue the technology from this 1.3-litre, three-cylinder engine into a 2.7-litre V6? 
Well, it's hard to know without finding out from someone that was part of the project, but my guess is that the methodology was there, but the technology in the 90s wasn't quite where it needed to be to one, make this engine clean enough, and two, make it powerful enough to justify putting it in a car. The three-cylinder engine created 130 horsepower, which meant a V6 would have created upwards of 260 horsepower. Now, those numbers are okay, but they're not going to blow anyone's socks off. The engine would be lighter and less complicated, but trying to justify it over a four-stroke V8 like the company was used to would be very, very difficult. Saying that, there are rumours that Ferrari nearly went for a turbocharged system using what they'd learnt from the F40 project. The rumour was that the engine would create 216 horsepower from its three cylinders, which meant doubling up to a V6 would see upwards of 430 horsepower. That's more like it, but there's no evidence that a working prototype of that engine ever actually existed. Nowadays, direct injection is incredibly effective and flexible, higher compression isn't too hard to come by, and with emissions at the forefront of most engine designers' minds, the simplicity and potential efficiency of a two-stroke engine makes it appealing to engineers like Pat Simmons. Especially seeing as Formula One isn't a heavyweight application, that relative lack of torque shouldn't be an issue. You can create a nice light, compact unit due to not needing a big complicated cylinder head, and reliability should increase massively simply due to the lack of moving parts. If you don't have valves, you can't drop a valve. Apparently, with all the modern developments in place, a two-stroke creates no more air pollution than a four-stroke, and the higher combustion temperatures lead to higher thermal efficiencies. They can be also made to be very high revving, meaning that the sound could be reminiscent of the naturally aspirated V8s and V10s of yesteryear. The tech may not have quite been there for Ferrari back in 94, but there could be a bright future ahead for the two-stroke engine. You may have noticed we've had another merch drop. This is a brand new t-shirt, new design, reminiscent of one of the epic challenges that the trio went on. So if you fancy one of these, click the link in the description below and you can get one. It's a cool t-shirt. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to DriveTribe.